Uh, yeah, so what are we doing at a gold conference? Um, it's uh, one of the few examples of a, of a battery junior pivoting to a gold story uh, that we really like in Western Victoria. Um, it's, a, it's a new style of gold um, uh, that we're looking for down there. We're starting to see evidence of, uh, of a major uh, new province of intrusive related gold, uh, quite close to the stall, uh, the stall mine. The, uh, the history of the company, so touch, touch on that. Um, uh, you know, for over 15 years, the company was developing uh, graphite resources in Mozambique, before, well before my time. Uh, we've come through an 18 month process of uh, selling those assets, um, which, now, which now is quite a, quite a handy company investment. Um, we've uh, acquired a major position in a graphite producer, a profitable producer, Tirupati Graphite, that are listed out of London. Uh, that's currently worth about $7 million to us, but um, the, the timing looks uh, quite key there in terms of they're just about to rapidly expand production at, uh, at, major, you know, at, at high margins. They're a high margin producer. Uh, so I'll touch on that a little bit, but uh, a lot of the talk will be focusing on the future of the company. Uh, we've recently done a consolidation, so it's a nice tight structure, and we're starting to see some pretty interesting gold results um, in an area that we've been um, itching to get into. So yeah, Western Victoria, um, we're close to stall. As I say, uh, we're on the western side of the stall granite there, which, uh, and as you can see, yeah, stall gold mine, Magdala, Wonga deposit sits nice up and snug against the, the stall granite. Uh, exploration success there, it's run, it's in private hands, so it's sort of hard to track um, how, how things are going there, but it's a major, as you'll notice, it's five, six million ounces total gold endowment. Um, long history of mining in that area. And uh, we can see at the Wonga deposit there, clear evidence of IRG, intrusive related gold association to the gold there. Uh, there's the northeast trending structural zone, uh, but essentially you're looking, what's really, what's really crucial is just the margins of that main stall pluton. Seems to be really important. We're out uh, off that western margin and the white rabbit district, as we call it, um, we go. So it's sort of new thinking for the area. Uh, we've been compiling evidence. Um, yeah, we've been sponsoring some research programs uh, looking at the surface materials, just getting all the evidence and convincing ourselves that this is the style of system uh, that we should be hunting for. And so, you know, it starts to dictate how we go looking for these things. So, you know, we're not used uh, to looking for these things, especially in Victoria, but, um, you know, the, the Canadians are quite good at it. Some major gold mines up in the, uh, in the Yukon and Alaska, uh, whereby, uh, you know, major gold resources, Pogo's the standout one, high grade, high tonnage. Uh, you see examples within the granites. Uh, they're not the oxidised, you know, porphyry, porphyry copper gold world is oxidised granites. These things are a different flavour. They're very reduced. They have a very distinct metal association. And we can see, uh, not, in, not in today's erosional sense, but um, we can see evidence of that these things were forming at, forming at depth um, within these systems. So it's, it's all connected. And um, in terms of epithermal systems associated with these flavoured granites, you know, you can look to Pajingo and some of these high grade uh, epithermal systems up in Queensland as well. Um, but we know we're, we're at a deeper level in terms of uh, where these things were forming uh, at the time. Targets that are really worthy of exploring for, you can see very economic examples um, elsewhere in the world, and that's just another way of displaying that. You know, Pogo is the standout high grade, high tonnage, you know, a blanket of high grade material, silica sericite. Uh, Arsenopyrite, strong arsenopyrite association, bismuth minerals, you know, we're looking at these pathfinders to give us a clue of, uh, of how to explore within these districts. And the key thing there is, um, you know, the higher grade versions are outside the, the margins of the granite or along the edge of those granite bodies. Uh, we do see evidence of the sheeted veins within the granite, but they tend to be, you know, large tonnage, but low grade. So. We're specifically targeting the edges because we think that, you know, we're seeing evidence that this is the case. We're seeing uh, that that's where the mineralisation is better formed. The, the image in the background there, so just zooming in slowly, it's about 15 kilometres we are here west of Stall. 
um, the mag highs, highs that you can just make out in the background of that image um, around you know, marking out the white rabbit diorite, these blobs here. So it's this northern margin and southern margin, all the surface geochem we've been doing over the years and compiling previous explorers work, uh, which didn't include a lot of multi-element work. So we've had to reassay a lot of materials to be able to you know, track these systems and explore within them using the pathfinders that we talked about, bismuth, delirium, antimony is very important. Um, to track the main fluid flow zones. And then within those zones, there'll be gold-rich portions. Um, gold, there are significant gold uh, anomalies at surface as well. So Cox's find, you know, 200 metre wide zone there of plus 50 grams, uh, uh, 20, 25, at least 25 samples sort of plus 30 grams there. Um, structurally complicated area. So we're, we're tracking where that goes at depth. We had uh, some breakthroughs sort of last year proving that that's primary mineralisation. There was suggestions in a lot of the old work over you know, 20, 30 years ago that uh, there was some alluvial uh, gold associated with that, but we're very convinced that's largely primary. So you've got a primary gold anomaly of that tenor uh, at surface. We think, well, that's very significant. Well worth exploring in that area. And so we've just come off a, a 2,000 metre uh, core drilling program uh, which was co-funded by the government uh, target uh, milestone scheme uh, in Victoria. Um, but we wanted to cover uh, multiple targets in this White Rabbit district, and uh, we're still waiting for some assays to come through there, but the initial results uh, we think you know, are quite encouraging. We're seeing... Sorry. There we go. So, you know, this is an example of the core hole close to Cox's find, slightly offset with geophysical support. Now, these are fairly low sulphur systems so that you don't traditionally go using a technique like IP to map the systems, but um, we've had some success. We're, we're seeing success of doing that anyway because um, the surrounding host rocks are so resistive and so sulphide poor. So we're seeing the contrast. You know, this is really encouraging looking at alteration zone, uh, dripping with um, pathfinders, uh, quite low in gold in this, in this area, but you know, very strongly developed silica sericite. Uh, we're seeing sulphide stringers through this, quite low sulphide contents in this particular hole. Over 20 metres there, and if we sort of look at um, the holes in that corridor that we've done to date, um, you can see there's two here. Uh, that was the hole uh, you saw the photos of there. 40 metres apart in real space, you see that zone doubles in thickness towards the north, and it does intensify visually in, uh, in the alteration intensity. Uh, so, you know, we've got this by the tail. We're just going to we're going to drill this thing towards the north. The pathfinders are telling us go north. The intensity in, and visually, you can see that's what we should be doing. And so, it's not a it's not a thin zone that we're talking about. It's it's doubled in thickness. It's 20 metres at this point. And as I said, touched on before, you know, we like, we like the margins of the main granite, which sort of sits in this area here. Um, the chargeability model sort of suggesting quite a broad zone, you know, broadly visualising the overall system. So we want to target this position right up against, um, right up against that granite body. That'll be part of the next phase of work. Um, within the granite itself, uh, some high grades there, but quite narrow. Um, you know, hence we're not going to be drilling too many holes within the granite body itself, uh, but we're certainly going to be peppering um, the margins. Uh, it's ticking a lot of boxes for us. Seeing some uh, porphyritic rocks as well, uh, which is not that, that uncommon. You often you can see lamprophires and some of these fancy, fancy dikes that uh, um, are part of that hydrothermal system that the granites are spitting out. On the northern side of that granite at White Rabbit, you know, we're seeing, uh, again, marrying up a bit of geophysics. Um, you know, we see the same alteration here. It's actually carrying gold, 0.62, uh, which gives us encouragement uh, that that's an important alteration style back uh, on the southern side at Cox's Fine that I've just spoken about. Um, broad zones, yeah, over 100 metres at low level gold, but, you know, it's talking about big, high, you know, this is, this is unusual. That's encouraging, you know, big, wide zones of altered rock um, showing evidence of fertility here. Oh, 
let's go back and I'll dwell on that a little bit. So yeah, obviously chargeability, I didn't say it's not, um, in this case we think it is telling us something in terms of the sweet spot. Um, we're still waiting for some results to come back here. Um, but obviously, you know, stepping over into this sort of uh, region makes a lot of sense. Uh, original drill holes designed around where, you know, the, where the GCHEM and the Air Corps was, was, was guiding us. But uh, again, you know, just the style of alteration that we're seeing here, the fact that it's carrying gold, the fact that we see antimony, tellurium, bismuth, Pathfinders, Pathfinder Association, we're encouraged by. Uh, or just touch on uh, our, our other main exploration project up in the East Kimberleys. Um, so, you know, argue these are battery commodities, aren't they? So, we, uh, so we, are, we are hanging on here, but we're just, um, this is a slightly earlier stage project for us. We've got um, up near the Savannah Mine uh, panoramic. So, yeah, nick perspective for nickel copper. Um, we've done some airborne geophysics, uh, highlighting some conductive uh, bodies in and around that geochem. Some quite high grade uh, copper numbers in the mix there, um, but we're a little way off um, getting the rig out here. We need to do a bit of more environmental permitting work and certainly the focus for the company is very much in that White Rabbit district. Uh, we think we're onto, we think we're onto something there. We've got, you know, we're ticking those boxes as far as the IRG style mineralisation. Um, so that's where the company's focus is gonna be from an exploration point of view. Uh, and you know, we differentiate ourselves here, I guess, uh, from the point of view that now we've, you know, we've, uh, we've finalised and completed a company investment in terms of the history of the company, developing the, the graphite assets. Uh, it's gone to a natural owner, Tirupati Graphite, have got 40 years of experience, mostly as a private company. They're probably, or they're the only graphite, uh, listed graphite company I'm aware of that are making, making money from mining graphite. Um, Coarse flake graphite, they've got two mines operating in Madagascar. Uh, they're ramping up, so our, our investment, as, as frustrating as it was that it dragged out for 18 months, uh, means that our invest, we've got more scrip, you know, we've got more scrip as part of the deal. So we've got a, we've got a bigger piece of their story um, as they ramp up to 30,000 ounces uh, in, the, in the last quarter this year, um, or the British. British quarter system that they use. Um, so very encouraged by their story, you know, big margins, even at these low levels, they're making really healthy margins. Um, so we're expecting, you know, more like $1,000 a ton margins, 30,000 ounces, so 30,000 tons, big pardon, too much gold. And they'll obviously go on and, and look to develop the Mozambique assets, which are fine flake graphite. They're the battery grade graphite resources. Um, but as we see elsewhere in the industry, that it's a it's a different game. So they're you know they're going to be a very profitable company, uh, independent of those assets. And this deal means we leverage uh, into that profit profitability. Uh, so we're going to we're going to remain quite busy. Uh, I mean, you know, four months ago we completed the deal. We then spent two months drilling aggressively. I'd say at White Rabbit, we had two rigs operating at one point. We're playing catch up a bit because we're quite excited to get some holes into those targets. Um, so we'll be continuing to do that. Uh, you know, we're working uh, with codes in the UTAS group in particular to you know, further characterise um, the mineralisation and refine our, our exploration criteria and techniques. But you know, we think we've got a couple of targets by the tail there. And uh, obviously, yeah, touching on the fact that you know we've got we've got a company investment whereby we can draw upon those funds as and when, when required. But I think the Tirupati story is really going to be quite exciting uh, over the next sort of three to six months. So uh, it'll be good to participate in in their story from that point of view. Thanks very much. <laughs>